He straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because- I look good. I got big energy every day. Let's go! And he is dicked. Blind squirrel finds a knife once in a while. That's right. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move and throws and touchdown. Look at my hurt. Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> Well, 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 welcome back, everybody, to the Charger Chat. How about that intro? Those of you that are listening on the podcast apps didn't see it, but if you go on over to YouTube, you're going to see three <laughs> knuckleheads <laughs> grinning was, and making a, weird faces. Yeah, that was all recorded a drunken night in Kansas City, and Kevin <laughs> tossed it up for everyone to see. But yeah. I... Love it, and you will it's too. Awesome. So come over yeah. to YouTube, check it out. At the very least, check out the intro because <laughs> it's so freaking cool. I am your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with two of Duggan brothers. Duggan brother number one would be Kev Huggin Duggan. Hey guys, and Kyle, the coach, a Duggan. Kevin's only number one because he's older, but yes, number one. Yeah, I was the chosen one. The chosen will. one. Yes, uh, folks. <laughs> the accident. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be a hefty episode. There is a lot to talk about. Uh, we've filled all of our coordinator positions. We'll talk about each and every one of them. Uh, we've got a very special fan focus. Uh, this is unlike any fan focus we have done before because this fan focus had a number on his back playing for the Chargers, folks. <laughs> our very first <laughs> Player interview, folks. This is ooh, it's exciting. It's I can I cannot wait to hear it. Um, any Charger fan uh, that is been with the Chargers for any length of time has to be aware of the Chargers <laughs> fight song. I guess for lack of a better dun, dun, term, dun, 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 dun. San Diego, Diego Super Chargers, Chargers. San Diego. Uh, it's it's so great <laughs> it's dated it's it's very 70s disco i remember going to a bar with kevin to watch us beat the Bengals in the playoffs yes and every time we scored any point that song would just t turn on and everyone would be dancing around <laughs> oh, it's the best. Dude, I missed it's so that song. Well, it, it, it had like had roots, you know. It's it, we're not we're we've been around a long time. We right? have this sweet old song that takes you back. It does. The reason we bring it up is it's interesting because that that song was made in '79 during the Air Coryell years. They needed some way to get people into the Chargers again, and damn, did that thing stick around for a while? Well, they didn't have anything else to work with. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have it. That's true. Um, but it, it's classic. It's Charger lore forever. But we right. recently, uh, somebody online um, known as Mike Eddy um, has come up with a new version mm. of the San Diego Supercharger song. Update. It is now called the Superchargers Remix. And he uh, gave us permission to let you guys check it out. So you guys want to hear it? I, yeah, I need to. I need to get my groove on. At least let's do it. I need to do some stretches. We need a early How Wooly episode got his groove shimmy back. in here. We here in LA. We can dazzle y'all with our play. The time is gone. Generation number one. I go. I like that. Oh man! Nice. Sign me I up like for that, it. dude. Thumping it's like bass. the perfect mix of like old and new and L.A. to Dago. I just loved it. Um, where I go, they go. Where I go, they go. That's um, right. So I just wanted to put it out there um, at Mike Eddy on Twitter and um, the guy that created the beat and did work with him at Mar underscore Tavius. Um, they created that song, and if you guys are interested, he said that if he gets enough uh, drums up and interest. 
Um, he's going to put together a full version. So if you're interested, nice. hit up at Mike Eddie and let him know you want more because I literally want that as my ringtone. That would make me so happy whenever you guys call me that plays. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for right now. That's true. I should make that my ringtone. I I, I got to get on that. That's awesome. That's such a good song, man. It just, ah, just puts you in the right mood, man. It just... <laughs> Ready to go. Ah, Game on. Love it. All right. Uh, well, as we announced on the last episode, Brandon Staley has been announced as our new coach. And man, it's just every time I hear anything about this guy, nobody has ever really said a bad thing about him yet. And it's not nope. like he's got a bad attitude or he can be kind of a jerk. Like, it's nothing, nothing is bad has been said about him. People don't even bring, like, people obviously bring up the fact that he doesn't have a huge amount of experience right. in the NFL, but it's almost overlooked so fast because of his endorsement that he's received from other people. Right. It's almost like everyone on, like, Good Morning Football, they bring it up and then kind of coast right over it. Don't make a big point out of it, or there's not a whole lot of coaches you can compare it to, so it's not like oh, well, this didn't work out for so-and-so. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like th they talk about this meteoric rise, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, but it makes sense. And what's so interesting about him is he brushes it off so quickly and he's so confident. Like I probably spent, I would say close to two hours now listening to him talk because his press conference was 90 minutes. That was a long press conference and he was yeah. answering questions to everyone. I don't remember Lynn doing that. Do you guys? No, no, nothing like no. that. No, yeah. he was always grumpy. Yeah, I don't, he, he was grumpy. I don't want to speak ill of the <laughs> fired. Of the no longer but, here. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it it, it was it was really fun to listen to. I think he answered. Yeah, we'll get into it more. But go ahead, finish. Yeah, what were you gonna say? No, I was just the, the one thing that I really took away from it, and it was a small thing, but it was like this guy's a communicator. And what I took out of it was like whenever he was talking to somebody, he kept saying their name. Like one right. some of these journalists, the like he would say yeah. their name. Say it was like Bob. It was like Bob. That's a really great question. So Bob, this is why I want to do this. And um, Bob, he, he said each person's name two or three times. It's just like that guy. Like I'm. I'm in. Like, if he said that to me and said my name three times, I'd be like, where, "What wall do you want me to run through? I'm just tell me what you want, Coach." <laughs> right. Like that's just the feeling I got from him. Yeah, he made a very big point about building the his philosophy and the Chargers are going to be about relationships first, and that's that's what that is. When you're trying to talk to a reporter, not just these are just a bunch of reporters, and I'm going to answer their questions, but calling them by name and making sure to like emphasize that I know who you are and I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's just something that people that want, like love relationships and are invested in, in trying to make someone feel welcome do. Um, so it, it, it immediately, you can say all the words you want of, yeah, we're going to build relationships, but even that little stuff is, is kind of emphasizing that that's really what he's about. That, that's when I, Think about that on how little experience he had. I, I go back to when we were talking about who we wanted to be a coach and the notion brought up that, you know, we want somebody who's been around, who has the experience, who knows how to be a head coach, which which makes sense. But when I'm hearing on the other side, and especially for Staley, is that he's younger, he doesn't have as much experience, but he communicates well. It's that that age that he's able to really relate, I think, with all of these guys. Because, I mean, all of these guys are in their 20s, maybe their 30s, depending on how long they've been in the league. So I think they can relate to him a lot more than some, you know, older guy that's in their 50s or 60s. No slam to those guys, but those guys are more about older football. Staley seems to be much more... Uh, New breed. New breed. He's got yeah. a different mindset. He's got a different plan for this team. And yeah. I think the players can buy into that a little bit more because it's like, oh, he's, he's speaking my language. Yeah, I think it goes twofold. I think that's absolutely true. I actually think he brings a lot of energy that mm -hmm. an older coach just cannot bring. You know, um, it it's just in his age and DNA and how he how he is as a person. He just brings a lot of energy. Like you get excited listening to him talk. Mm -hmm. The only thing I will say, I did hear a couple of OKs. Some Sean McVay was peeping through um, as he was talking. And I was like, Brandon, you better lock that crap up quick, my dude. Like, I understand when you're with someone, sometimes the way they talk rubs off on you, but that needs to get nipped fast. Yeah. McVay Rose was flaring. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, seriously. There was two other things during the press conference, and it kind of didn't happen 
it, a part of it happened during it and part of it happened on social media afterwards. The, the, the thing that kind of stood out, the funniest thing, I think somebody reposted this was, he was talking about his kids and how excited they were to be there and his youngest was uh, taking a nap and he's like, he competed hard all day. He's just, you know, he's yeah. taking, like everything <laughs> is a competition. Like yeah. his kid was competing hard today and he got to take a Not, nap. Oh, his kid was playing hard. No, he was no, competing. He's competing, he was competing, whatever yeah. they're doing. I love that. <laughs> and then after that, they showed a video of his two older kids walking through the, um, look like the offices at chart at the Chargers offices and we're hanging out with Derwin James yeah, and pretty cool. one of them's like uh Derwin James I hear you're a really good safety like just the way his kids are talking no to yeah like, he goes they go like yeah we're gonna get your jersey I think and they go yeah. you know what number I am is like yeah you're 33 I don't know who you are yeah you're talking Derwin about? James Woo, yeah <laughs> no, just like, debriefing this morning with dad what are you talking I about? feel very strongly you're a product of your environment and who you're around if these yeah. kids are like this <laughs> we're in yeah. good shape so yeah. I'm uh, there's it, there, and it's so cool is there's so much stuff out on him right now so mm -hmm. it, there was one thing that just came like literally just came out um he was on the um doug gottlieb show on fox sports radio and they were talking about the the loss um the packers just had and mm -hmm. kicking the field goal as opposed to um going going for the touchdown they asked you know he asked them straight up brandon if you're in that situation what would you do um and he said i would have put the ball in justin herbert's hands Nice. And just like yeah. even Aaron though Rogers even hands. though yeah. he's yeah. not in that game, I yeah. got so excited so for high. next yeah. season. Like he's saying, like even when he's not meaning to, I don't think he's saying the things that I, as a Charger fan, want to hear and need to hear. Right after yeah. a year of yeah. downplaying how you know he's right. a backup for a reason, you know Tyrod's our guy, like. Dude, we, he knows what he has, and it's exciting to hear him say what I want. Yeah. What and I would say. Oh, over and over, we're going to build our, I don't have an offense. We're going to build our offense around what Justin does well. Mm -hmm. So exactly. it's like, I'm not coming in here. We're going to run the ball 15, 15 times a quarter just because, uh, cause that's what I think wins football games. It's no, what does our roster look like? Okay. Justin Herbert's the best rookie quarterback in the history of the NFL. Let's build our offense around this guy that he can develop into. Say that one more time. Justin Herbert is what? The best rookie quarterback in, in the, the NFL, NFL. In the NFL. We have yeah. the best rookie quarterback <laughs> in NFL history. Yep. Oh. <laughs> That's like catnip for me. <laughs> it's like catnip for clones. <laughs> Guess Minnie Me's not getting any chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want to know something even more fun so another interesting thing i found on reddit and we interviewed him back you know er, uh, earlier on the season sometime in like september was that the guy that did all the analytics for you know looking at how everything is broken down and he had a really interesting stat and he basically said um the highest passer rating allowed by the bucks all season was 137.9 for the Chiefs, it was 134.4. Those were the two highest ratings they allowed. Um, guess who that quarterback was that they gave up? Th those Justin Justin Herbert. Yes. He had the best QBR ratings against the teams that are going to be in the Super Bowl. So, you know what? I have so much confidence right now. I, I already did. It's just, it feels so good. And I love stats like that. It makes me happy. <laughs> I love stats that go in our favor. Right. I love yeah. it. I, I love to be told what I want to hear. I just love it. <laughs> yeah, because I want to hear that stat. I'm tired of hearing the stat of like, this is how many games the Chargers lost by one score. <laughs> we haven't <laughs> beat the <laughs> AFC West in this many years. <laughs> yeah. No. Tell me more about how awesome our quarterback is. Please. I'd much rather hear that. Um, and speaking about our quarterback during that press conference, uh, Brandon Staley had some great things to say about Justin Herbert and his plans for him. Uh, I think that's what I was so excited about to convey in this process was my offensive vision because I do consider myself an offensive coach, Staley said. And I think that's what helped me so much on the defensive side of the ball is my offensive background. Kyle nailed it, dude. Kyle nailed exactly the take of a quarter, former quarterback, d really smart defensive mind, and he's looking at it from a quarterback's point of view. So good work, Kyle. Golf clap. <laughs> he went on uh, to say, uh, comparing, I guess, uh, Justin to Jared Goff, he said, Jared Goff's a different player than Justin Herbert, who's a different player than Pat Mahomes or whomever, Aaron Rodgers, you name it. These guys are all unique players, and that's what I talked about with the system. You want to be able to create a system around your quarterback. Again, knowing what you have and not imposing something, but building around what works and what 
what tools do we have and how do they work? And let's make that shine. Let's, oh God. They're not forcing a square peg into a round hole. I love it. Justin's an octagon and they're making a real nice ring around him so we can go beat up some people. You feel me? Yeah. I'm. It just felt like with this season, we went into the season with, we have a Tyrod Taylor. We're going to run the ball a lot, no matter what. Right. Justin gets thrown in and it's kind of like, Oh, what do we do now? <laughs> you know, like totally. I, I understand and I have com- like I have some understanding of like that's hard, man. If you're gonna go install a whole nother offense just like that right. because you two weeks basically into almost the season killed, yeah. almost killed a guy, you know? <laughs> and so like I, that's hard, but I and they did a pretty good job, but I think it's gonna be drastically different what we see this next year because because you have a guy that's willing to put everything into kind of into this guy's hands. It felt like old, and I'm not saying Anthony Lynn is super old, but that's that's the mindset that comes from is old football. Old football trying to impose that mindset on new football. And that's not what Justin Herbert is. He's not old football. The guy is so mobile. His first touchdown, he ran it in against the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, and we and we saw flashes of that, but it just never really felt like they were utilizing him to the best of his ability. That being said, he still had an insane year, which he is still crazy. Did amazing. Yeah. He still yeah. broke all those records. So it's like now that you have somebody that not only sees the talent that Justin Herbert has, but knows that we need to make this shine as best as we can. It's it's so exciting. I want it to be next season right now. Screw this Super Bowl. I don't care who wins. I, know. I don't give a shit. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm over it. I'm so over it. <laughs> uh, but let's see. It wasn't just Justin Herbert that uh, Staley had people to talk about. He also talked a little bit about uh, Bosa. He said, I think Joey's one of the elite outside rushers in the game. This guy's got every tool that you're looking for. Size, speed. He's got some of the best hands in the NFL. This guy really knows how to rush. He's a relentless competitor. He's got a motor. Vroom, vroom, vroom. I'm excited Mo- to see you. <laughs> oh, I think you got your commercial. Yeah, right there, the Bosa Motors. Right Bosa there. Motors. Bosa's bike. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut I, you off. Sorry. I, <laughs> no, no, that's okay. I'm excited to see what Bosa looks like in this defense. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I think he's going to be used all over the place. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think the base is going to be a three, four, but there's going to be some four man fronts. that's going to look normal for Joey, but I think he's going to have, there's going to be some opportunities for him to be in a two point stance off the edge wide and come in uh, from different angles and really get after the quarterback and put him down in that nose guard almost in that zero technique and let him get off and see what he can do with creating uh confusion for blitzing a backer with, I don't know. I, I, I'm just really excited to see what Brandon Staley, because although he's not technically our defensive coordinator, um, he's calling the he plays. Is, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to see um with Bosa and freaking Derwin James, who's really a positionless player. He can, play every position Mm -hmm. on the defense right yeah getting a full season of him back healthy in staley's hands and with his plan in in mind like oh god we better honestly like i don't know if this is a hot take if you guys think this is dumb Mm. i think we give him an extension now before he has an Pro Bowl, all pro (sighs) first team year next year man it's risky (laughs) yeah it's risky i you you i What's the take? What do you guys think? It doesn't seem like he's lost any momentum because like you just sent that uh, that video, that Instagram post of him like jumping up on the, what is that little yeah. half ball balance on one leg? Yeah, like, dude, I would tear my ACL doing that with healthy knees. <laughs> I think he's I rehabbing with that kind of work. I definitely bruised mine just watching it. So <laughs> I think uh, yeah, he really doesn't seem like he's lost much of any speed or anything. So yeah, I, I mm, boy. What's the what's the play like? Do you let him ride it out? And he Brandon Staley is known for getting the best out so of his best players. Here's yeah. my take: is here's my just like since this is such a fun hypothetical, I think I think he's gonna fall in love with Staley so much the way that Jalen Ramsey mm. fell in love with Staley so much that they'll make not something gonna take work. A discount. Well, maybe they'll work something out with Jalen Ramsey. It. Did not take a discount. That's <sighs> that was before that sure. <laughs> dude. But that was before you even got to know Staley. Right. He was coming into Hard Knocks, being a yeah. P-R-I-C-K. Staley was only with him for one year. No, 
Derwin hasn't the, gotten paid yet, man. He's still on his rookie contract. No, I He's know. Gonna take money. That, so, so this fun hypothetical just got stomped no, on the throat by the, Kyle. But Thank the thought you, Kyle. process is like, do you sign him early? Do you sign him right now to an his extension to a regular extension after blowing up his knee, right? Or do you let him play a year, just ball out, and then you got to pay him potentially more, right? Well, his rec, his, the way he's going right now is he's a season on, season off, season on, season off. So if you're just going to prepare for a season on, season off, I still think his full seasons could be worth the contract. <laughs> and just knowing the one. next, just knowing <laughs> the next season after that, he's going to have to sit out. <laughs> like I'd probably still pay for that just to keep him on our team. Yeah, that's a stupid answer to a James, fun guys. question. We're all in. It doesn't uh, yeah. matter. We just. We want to see it happen. And Staley definitely had some words to say about Derwin James. Uh, guys, it's hard to stand out in this league, right? Because everybody is so amazing. But every now and then you just see a guy that, man, he just stands out. And I just saw this guy before the press conference, okay? And I'm just here to tell you, okay? All right? See? This guy stands he's okay. out. He, he's he's okay? so all right with okay. <laughs> <laughs> and just ask my kids because they know all these guys. They've been around some of these players and they know that 33 is just a little bit different than the rest. And so just so impressed with his versatility. I know a lot of his coaches from college, the competitor he is, his future is so bright. Can't wait to connect with him and compete. Man. God, I hope he has a, if he has like a good, like a, if he's healthy, man, like, He's going to, it's going to be the craziest season for him. It's yeah. going to be so exciting. One of the things, it's interesting that you bring up the possibility on his fifth year extension. How many guys do you think that could potentially walk from this team won't because they know they've seen Justin Herbert, they've seen his potential, they've seen Staley, they know what he can do with the defense? Like, how many guys do you think will stick around and just kind of put their ego aside and not be demanding big money just so they can play on this team? I don't think, I think at this point, man, it's the other way around. I think the the staff is going to decide on guys if they want them there or not, not the other way around the way, the way that the, the, the staff is shaped up. There's a lot of people got cut. And I think yeah. it's going to be the same kind of thing with these players where it'll be less of a, hey, will you will you take a pay cut to stay? It'll be like, so you got to prove Maybe to me do. why we should keep you. Mm. I think right. it'll be, I think that's the Interesting. mentality more. Interesting. Just the way, the way it's shaping yeah, up take. with all new staff. I think that's where yeah. it'll go. Mm. I think that's a good take. I think that's true. I think all these guys, especially in contract years, they, they really have to ball, you know, like, you have to impress all the, like even Justin, even all these guys, they got to impress their coaches. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, it's going to be fun. I hope we have a training camp. It's going to be a fun one to watch because it's going to be competitive. Anytime you get a new staff in there, you got to impress everyone all over again. I hope this, the, the vaccine and all the stuff with COVID and everything this year, by the time we get to the summer and, you know, the training camps and all that stuff. I hope everything has kind of slowly worked itself out because getting a new head coach and if you had a new head coach going into this season, like we just had, where you have to do everything on zoom, like that's just, that's, that's crazy. No so fun. I no, it's such a, it's such a hindrance. So I really hope that that all works out for every, not only for my chargers, but everybody <laughs> in the country, in the world, but go. selfishly, I want them to have, <laughs> have training camp and I want to go <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, with the way things are going, I think next year is definitely looking brighter, at least for the possibility, I mean, of these guys to be able to play and practice together without necessarily any major concerns, um, but also to allow fans to be a part of the process as well. I mean, we're watching like the Chiefs game. Man, that seemed like a packed stadium this last <laughs> this last uh, game that they had on Sunday. And uh, same thing for uh, Lambeau Field. Like, there seemed to be quite a few people out there. So I think we're definitely trending in the right direction. It's just unfortunate it took a whole football season to get to that point. Um, but as Kevin mentioned about these guys having to basically prove why they need to be around, and he mentioned it, we've got basically all new coordinators in this team. So it's, it's going to be a brand new team that we see here, folks. And as we heard today, uh, Joe Lombardi uh, is the new offensive coordinator. Uh, just prior to him getting hired, we heard Shane Steichen going to the Eagles. So now we've got Joe Lombardi. And quick question. Do you know who um, Joe Lombardi's grandpapa was? His grandpa was a trophy, Kevin. His, gra his grandpa, his grandpa <laughs> is, the trophy. is the trophy that you want to win at the end of the season. So that is just the goal. Some, 
That is just yeah. His yeah. Joe's grandpa is the goal, and I am I'm excited to have. We're looking stock. for a family reunion. That's some <laughs> some good good stock right there. He's already won one with uh, uh, the Saints. So right. I, I you know a lot of people are down on this. Um, I don't know why. Um, there's two years at, at Detroit. Kyle, do you know any more specifically about why people might be down on this, and why is that ridiculous? Yeah, I don't know, man. Like. Anyone that's ever been associated with Detroit, you, it's like the Black Plague. Like, you just don't want to touch it. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. uh-oh, he was in Detroit. Ew. Can't be good. Um, Get your crucifix. But I don't know. I I think that's just... <sighs> you take opportunities as they come in this league. Um, and obviously, Detroit is a tough gig. We saw Anthony Lynn, who just got the axe, is now with Detroit. Right, um, as their <laughs> offensive their coordinator. Whole... Yeah. <laughs> Their their whole that whole staff, good God, man! Did Dan, you hear that, Dan coach Campbell biting kneecap? <laughs> <laughs> that was the craziest press conference I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, like gonna we're gonna get on kneecaps. We're gonna, we're gonna get knocked down, but we're gonna climb up, and as we climb up, we're gonna bite some kneecaps, and we're gonna get up, and we're gonna <laughs> bait, you know, hit some people in the face, and then we're gonna go down again, and then on our way back up, we're gonna get the other kneecap. We're like, gonna spend a lot of time bro, on the ground. We're gonna get familiar with the is, ground. <laughs> what is your fetish with kneecaps, my man? Jeez. That was the weirdest like illustration I've ever heard in my whole life. That's so creepy. I was like, and dude, then, we need to get you checked out, my man. <laughs> the the Lynn hire makes sense though. He wants to run the ball four hundred times a game yeah he just wants to bust kneecaps and run the football <laughs> but yeah i i just think that i don't know like that was a he was only there for a year and a half not even a year and a half mm-hmm. um and i think the idea of a lombardi to me i'm like uh that guy's probably had it pretty easy he probably walked into the league and got offered these positions he man he's grinded he's he's got the experience he First off, he played at the Air Force Academy. He was a tight end at the Air Force Academy. Mm. Started his his final year. And he went on four years active duty military with the Air Force. Wow. Um, his final two years, he actually was a volunteer coach at Dayton. Imagine that. Mm. Brandon Staley's Dayton. alma mater. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then he, he was an assistant all through the ranks. Bunch of different teams. He coached in um, different, like the Virginia military Institute. He paid his dues. He did not get a, Oh, you're a Lombardi here. Come be on my staff mm-hmm. as a, some quality control coach. Uh, he paid his dues. He's, he's has a lot of experience at a lot of different places. Um, yeah. With the lions. So the first year he was there, he went 11 and five and they made, I was the just about to say that. That's yeah. Yeah. It, what are you not supposed as, to do it, with the taking Detroit? The, the lions to the playoffs is a miracle. Playoffs? That, that's, yeah. That's playoffs. working miracles. <laughs> Um, the second year he got, he got let go. They were one and six. Um, and they just wanted, uh, to mix things up. Honestly, I think that's what it was. I think they, they, they had a bad team and they needed to mix things up. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of, fall, guys. Uh, very similar to our special teams coach getting let go. It's just like, you got, somebody has to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I did, a, I looked at a couple little articles from back then when he got let go. Um, they they were really big in the short passing game. And as we all know, Matthew Stafford likes to throw the deep ball. Mm. Um, I don't think that it just meshed very well. Uh, his wanting to throw the ball a lot, a lot, a lot just didn't mesh with um, the idea of you have to run the ball to set up play action, to set up the deep pass. Um, some Charger fans, my co-hosts specifically, will probably like this statistic. <laughs> Um, so I looked at his like um, offensive stats from when he was the OC. Um, they were middle of the pack in offense um, and middle of the pack in passing. So like 20th, 15th to 20th is kind of where they were. Uh, they were bottom of the league in rushing. They were at 30th in the league while he was there in rushing attempt mm, wow, and wow, rush attempts. Um, so you're, you throw the ball a lot. He was 30th in the league in rush attempts. Mm-hmm. So they did not run the ball. He just <laughs> yeah. threw the ball every single play. I know Kevin's getting it. Just his blood <laughs> is boiling, getting excited about throwing the ball 50 times a game. Um, but that that's why he was let go. Um, but here, here's what I'll bring it back to. He's had consistency. Um, he's been the quarterback coach for Drew Brees for 10 years now. Mm-hmm. Two stints of five years each. Um, you don't bring a guy back continually year after year after year if he's not providing um, something that's beneficial for your team. Mm-hmm. Um, Drew Brees seemed to like him. He seemed to be able to help him a lot. 
Um, and the Saints are a top five offense every single year. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows that offense inside and out being a quarterback coach. He knows what Drew Brees thinks in and out of every single play. Um, I think he's fit. He, he needs another opportunity, obviously. Um, the only thing that's that's tough is his, his, his going from a quarterback coach to an OC again um, without an offensive-minded head coach. Um, obviously, our coach has an offensive background being a quarterback. Uh, he coached with Sean McVay, who's a big offensive kind of guru, a lot of people say. So I'm sure he'll have input. Uh, but you are putting a lot on Joe Lombardi's hands to go from quarterback coach for five, the last five years to boom right into calling plays. Uh, but I'm I'm not hesitant about it. I'm not scared. I'm not thinking that Joe Lombardi's a bad hire by any means. Guess, guess who I am? Ooh. Are you a ghost? Uh, I'm the ghost, ghost? of Vince Lombardi. Ooh. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> I will help you, grandson. Ooh. So there you go. That's, I'm not wow. worried about it. Kind of, kind of spooky, huh? Uh, yeah, spooky. Kind of it's not even Halloween yet. I, I'm not worried about Lombardi either. I, I think, I think Staley truly has a plan for every aspect of this team and includes the offense. He's not necessarily going to be calling plays, but he knows how he wants Lombardi to treat the offense, how he wants to utilize. Herbert and I'm not I'm not stressed about it one iota. It's just kind of cool to have a Lombardi though, right? Right. Isn't that kind of it a cool, cool? It feels it, good. Just just it in is. the there's name, some, it's, there's it's some it's, level of confidence. It's superficial and to definitely to a certain extent, but right. it's kind of nice to say you yeah. have a Lombardi on your team. So yeah. it's kind of there cool. was an interesting take that I saw. I think it might have been on Reddit where they talked about like Lombardi doesn't have like aspirations to become a head coach because as soon as he does, he's going to be compared to his grandpa. So. He's he loves the game, obviously, and he wants to be a part of it, but he doesn't ever really want to be a head coach. So I think he's more focused on just being the best at whatever position he ends up being. And right now it's offensive coordinator. So that's like that's like Tom Brady's kids becoming offensive linemen. They're like, ah, I'm not about yeah, that. I'm I, not interested. I, I, I don't want to throw the ball. I just want to protect the guys. No, no, thank you. No. <laughs> no, I'll pull. I'll pull for yeah, a That's right. <laughs> Got some of those Giselle jeans to be a real lineman down there. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I don't know if they have those jeans. <laughs> All right. Well, enough about Lombardi. Uh, we've also hired our new defensive coordinator, uh, who is Ronaldo Hill. He was the Broncos defensive backs coach, uh, brought in now to be a defensive coordinator. And I think this is his first time being a defensive coordinator, right? Yeah. I don't see it on his resume. Yep. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be a weird position because you know Staley's already come out and said that he is going to be calling plays. So um, I think this is a level of like a comfortability hire where he just you know worked with them in Denver. Um, and there's some familiarity there. I don't have a lot of. I don't know much about Ronaldo Hill. I know he was a player, but it seems like a kind of a comfort thing to have somebody he trusts and and knows to come in and kind of help him run the day to day and then he'll, he'll call the plays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think it's a great hire. You hire a guy that's been a player. Um, coach Daly never played in the NFL. He's, he's been a coach for four years. So his total exposure to the NFL is, is pretty minimal compared to most head coaches. Um, and players know that players, um, they respect whether you want that to be true or not. They respect guys that have played in the NFL and have been in their shoes. Um, so to get a guy like this, that's done that, um, and be able to be a day to day guy um, for 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 um, Ronaldo. This is a dream opportunity. Um, you get the title right. of defensive coordinator. Um, you get to learn from Brandon Staley, who has proven to be one of the, the one of the best up and coming defensive coordinator minds in the NFL. Um, and you get to be that guy. Like you get to be the the players' coach. You don't have to be the the tough get on you all the time coach you can be that player's guy like guys i know what you've been through i know what i know what's going on um i'll talk to coach daily blah 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 you can kind of <laughs> be that that coach um so i think this is an awesome opportunity for him to learn to what it looks to be a dc to do the day to day of being a defensive coordinator um and then be able to sit there and listen and give input to staley at halftime um drawing up adjustments the other thing I'll say that we didn't touch on Staley coming out and saying, yeah, I'm going to call the plays. I love it. Like I That's love great. that yeah. coach Lynn didn't, didn't do that. You know, he's calling the plays, but he didn't just come out and say, yeah, I'm calling the plays. Mm -hmm. That's what's, what's going to happen. Ownership. I love that, that coach Staley came out and said, 
Yep, that's the plan. I'm going to call the plays. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you guys don't like, if you don't like a play call, come ask me about it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, take some responsibility for what you're doing as a coach. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I love that. I like the hire. Obviously, like you said, Kev, he's comfortability there. This guy's been a player. He was a player in the league for a long time, 10 years in the league. Um, and now he's been a coach, and he's had he's, – he, he's deserving of an opportunity. I think it's a great hire. Yeah, I, I think it's – I think – because I asked you, you know, uh, uh, prior to recording the episode, like what what can we even expect out of a defensive coordinator when a coach just outright says that he's going to be calling the play? So, uh, you know, some of the takes that I've been hearing from other, you know, Charger fans is like, why is he hiring all guys that he knows? And it's like, why wouldn't you hire <laughs> all not? guys that you know? <laughs> I yeah, I don't like, understand that question. Yeah, at I, all. I think I think for a lot of fans, they look at the Anthony Lynn George Stewart situation, uh, having that guy being a mentor Negatively. and having it that negative effect. Um, but this feels like you know what he's he is the mastermind right now of this team. Um, and Telesco, I think, said in one of his uh, press conferences that like they're letting Staley pick all of these guys. They're giving him the freedom to make these choices. So if these guys are in the coordinator position, it's because Staley wanted him there. It's not because yeah, Telesco got him on the cheap or anything like that. Like yeah. Staley wants them there and because he knows he knows how to utilize these guys and he trusts them. Yeah. Your first time as a head coach, you're only going to bring in guys that you trust. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're not bringing in guys that, oh, I've I talked to so and so and they think that he could do a good job. Right. It's I have firsthand experience. My my butt's on the line. Like I'm four years in the NFL. I got a lot to prove. I'm gonna bring in guys I know can get the job done. Mm-hmm. Um, even if they're all like 32 years old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think the the most interesting thing for me and just kind of looking at it was like well, kind of what the span I are doing. It's kind of not what I was expecting them to mm-hmm. do. Um, and I think this here's a, a great reflection of that as like an interesting fact was when Anthony Lynn became the Chargers coach, he inherited some coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's a list of who he inherited. He inherited Ken Wisenhunt as his OC. Um, tight ends coach John McNulty, Nick Sirianni, wide receivers, Shane Steichen, QBs, and Giff Smith, defensive line. Um, so far, from all accounts, Brandon Staley has inherited no one, not even nobody, not even John Lots Nuts. If, if you know, if you, heard, you know, the callback, <laughs> our strength and conditioning That's coach by. <laughs> From what Daniel Popper just reported not too long ago is that he's no longer on the team. So literally, the span I are letting him basically do whatever he wants. Clean house. Yeah. And not hamstring him with guys that he doesn't feel comfortable with. Or, you know, because there's a certain element of like, and Kyle, you can talk on this, is have, being a coach that's younger than most of the guys that are working for you. Like in my profession for a while there, I, I came up pretty young and I had crew members on on film sets and stuff that were a lot older than me and that's just an interesting weird dynamic and if you don't get the right people there there's not a lot of trust or they don't really want to listen or it, there can just be some friction so the fact they're kind of letting that happen and letting him pick his guys and you know our average staff age now is like 39 38 years old like <laughs> you know it's 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 kind of cool yeah absolutely I, i'm I, it's 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 very different like you said um those were all a lot of those guys that we kept on were good coaches mm-hmm. too you know like Siriano is the the head coach of the Eagles now. Yeah. It's like these those were not bad guys that the this ownership, leadership, GM, whatever it was, were like, hey, you need to keep these guys on. It's not like, oh, they left them with bad coaches, but they weren't his. He didn't choose no. them. That, that that wasn't his identity, his philosophy. Mm-hmm. He didn't necessarily know them and have a working relationship with them. Um, so it is very different for sure. Right. Letting him choose all of his staff. Uh, some of the other hires that we saw get picked up, uh, Jay Rogers, he's the new defensive line coach. Uh, Joe Barry, he's the new defensive passing game coordinator slash linebacker coach. Uh, and the, the other coordinator position we saw get filled was a Darius Swinton, uh, former Arizona Cardinals assistant special teams coach. Uh, is now the special teams coordinator for the Chargers. It's kind of crazy that our new special teams coach is like half the age of George Stewart. So I, there's <laughs> right. there's something refreshing. And that's one. this guy is in a good position because you can't get any worse than what we were last year. It doesn't right. get any worse. It <laughs> right. really doesn't. Yeah. So he he's set up in a position where if we're middle of the pack, 
and we have a top uh, one of the top uh, defenses and a really good offense, like we're going to be a very competitive team. So I don't know yeah. much about him, Kyle. Did you look at him a little bit? Uh, no, the one hire that I wanted to talk about was Jay Rogers, the Chicago Bears defensive line coach, because um, our brother-in-law, Tyler, is a diehard Bears fan, and everyone was calling for Jay Rogers to be promoted as the new DC once Pagano retired. Mm. And we brought him over. And my assumption was that he would be announced as the DC. Me too. But he's he's the D-line coach. You know, like he had a lateral move for the same position at a new team. That I think that speaks a lot to what um, Jay Rogers thinks of Brandon Staley. He's like, I'm willing to leave the Bears and go coach for Coach Staley because I, I believe in him that much, even though I'm not getting a, really a change in title whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So I think that speaks a lot to our head coach as well. Big time. Yeah, it's a it's a whole new ball game. Uh, this is a se- an off season where we get to see the head coach basically build this entire team, including the coaching staff. I mean, it's 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 exciting, folks. There's there's a lot of new faces around the corner. We still have to go through all the free agency to find out who's actually staying, who's going. We've got a draft to go through to see who they feel is going to be the best uh, pick for the draft. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot going on. So um, as we mentioned, we've lost, uh, let's see, Shane Steichen went to the Eagles. Anthony Lynn went to the Lions. Uh, weeks ago, Gus Bradley went to the Raiders. And George Stewart, I don't know, he's... He's hanging around somewhere. <laughs> the, the one interesting one, yeah, George Stewart. The one interesting one is uh, Pep Hamilton. So he's interviewed right. with a couple teams, but those positions have been filled. There's one team that requested to interview him. I don't know if they've interviewed him yet. Is the Titans for their offensive coordinator position? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for me in my ideal world, they haven't. I don't think they've hired a quarterbacks coach yet. So if there is a world where he doesn't leave, um, and if Staley likes him and it fits his philosophy, I think you know Pep Hamilton would be absolutely a great you know if we had one person to hold on to from last year's staff i think right. pep hamilton has probably earned it over anyone um and i've even seen people getting pissed off on twitter of like you know you know now that uh steichen is with the eagles are saying like shane steichen was you know imperative and so important with the development of Herbert. Yeah, people I... like it was pep hamilton <laughs> um, so i you know <laughs> That's I'd I'd like to see if you're gonna have somebody come back I'd like to see Pep but you know I would hope, too. hopefully he gets a big position but if he has to go somewhere and still be a QB coach I'd like to hope he's gonna wants to stay with us right the good thing if he goes to the Titans is I think we get some extra draft picks from him getting promoted to a higher position um, but if he can stick around and and stay with Herbert be like the anchor for Herbert having him and Lombardi, who was the QB coach for the Saints. You've got two QB coaches that are very QB focused. And I, Staley, who was a QB in And Staley. I, I think it's just nothing <laughs> a lot but of good QB thing. vibes. Yeah, a lot of QB vibes. <laughs> Let's QB focus vibes. on Herbert. Let's make him the best he can absolutely be. So we'll see what happens with Pep. If, we, if he stays great, if he doesn't, that's okay too. Um, it's not the end of the world. So... Um, all right, no, enough about all this news and nonsense and, and craziness going on. It's time now to look at, to the coach that we know and love. It's Kyle, the coach Duggan, talking about what's going on in his corner. Coach, what's going on in the corner over there? What's going on in Coach's corner? It's it's quiet. There's not, not, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of games to diagnose. Um, there's, there is one game coming up that uh, is very relevant to the Chargers, especially because of what happened last year at the Senior Bowl, which takes place this Saturday. Mm. Um, that's where Justin Herbert blew up and rose up draft boards, and people were saying he might be drafted um, over Tua after the Senior Bowl. Um, so it, it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, thank goodness he wasn't. Uh, but it's, it's a fun game to watch, especially if you go into it knowing, like, Oh, the Chargers, we need uh we need a quarterback. Let's see what happens with some of these guys. Um, and just as a reminder, these are only seniors. You don't they don't they don't invite any underclassmen. So sophomores or redshirt sophomores, juniors that are coming out, uh, they don't get to go. So these are just seniors, these are the older guys they get to play in this game. Um, and one position of focus obviously is offensive tackle. Um, mm-hmm. but let's just be honest watching an offensive tackle isn't the most fun thing to do in the whole world. Um, you love having a good one, but you hope that nothing really comes of it. You, you never know, have like to talk about you, them. They're ex- just doing their job. Yeah. Yep. They just sit there and 
set really, really hard right. and can block really good. You know, that's pretty much <laughs> the only time you ever notice is when they screw it up block and they let some guy really through and good. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. So like we could watch the Leatherwood, you could watch these prospects that everyone's proposing that falls to us. But, right. um, what I wanted to look at and see if there's anyone to watch, um, is that outside linebacker position, especially now with the, everyone's kind of assuming we will move to this three, four scheme. Right. Um, the outside linebacker is, is a different breed in a three, four versus a four, three, um, in a four, three, which we're in right now, your outside linebacker is is a little bit more of a, a middle backer type. They're very rarely walked up to the line of scrimmage, rushing off the edge. Uh, a lot of the time, they're going to be five yards deep, um, reading a guard, dropping into coverage, getting over the top, uh, doing different stuff. And a 3-4, uh, a lot of the times, they're outside of the tackles. Either they'll come down and rush off the edge. Uh, they may line up over a slot. They, they're, they're a very different type of player. Um, so to look at some of the outside linebackers in the senior bowl, I wanted to pick just one for you guys to look at. Uh, it's a guy that's new to me. I hadn't known a whole lot about him until I started doing a little research. Uh, but his name is Hamilcar Rashad Jr. Um, he played at Oregon State. Uh, the guy is an a freak pass rusher. Mm. He's a freak. He, he, he the reason that I thought that think that he'll be a great fit for the Chargers is he's almost like a Leonard Floyd type who had an all. Mm a career year last year with the Rams with Brandon Staley. A lot of people are assuming that we'll try to sign him here in free agency. Uh, but this guy, Hamilcar reminds me a lot of him. Uh, he's a six foot four, 240 pound um, outside linebacker. He, he, and that's what they played at Oregon state. They played a three, four. Um, so he's very comfortable in a two point stance, um, a two point stance, meaning he doesn't have a hand on the ground. Um, a three-point stance would be one hand on the ground. There's three points of contact, kind of the, the reference gotcha. there. But he's comfortable in that two-point stance, being that outside three-four type linebacker. Um, he he's an incredible pass rusher, um, and we know that with Melvin Ingram likely leaving um, our team here this offseason, um, that that's what we need. We need guys that can get after the quarterback. Uh, another thing that that adds to his his unique. Trick, uh, skill set is he's very uh, hybrid. He's not overly big and bulky and has to sit there with his hand in the ground and rush the quarterback. Um, our coach coaches gets the best out of these players, mm -hmm. and the more dynamic, the better. I think with Coach Staley, uh, I think he could he could be a huge fit. So if you decide to to, to turn on the the Senior Bowl because the rest of the football is just <laughs> with. <laughs> Freaking Mahomes yeah. and Brady. Yeah. Uh, I don't really want to think about that game. Yeah. Uh, toss a senior bowl on and look for that guy um, to make some plays um, just to get to kind of see if you think that he would be a good fit for our team. Um, there is an underclassman that won't be playing this weekend um, that that some people have projected to us in some of the mocks that I've seen lately. Uh, his name's Joe Tryon. He's at, he's a, he played for UW. Uh, he's also a big dude, 6'4", 250. He's very much a hybrid type of player. Uh, he can get after the quarterback, but I think that we could also use him. That's that's what's fun about a 3-4 is these guys, they have to be great pass rushers, but they also have to be able to, to be more than just single focus, single minded. I'm just going to rush. The, you see me, you know I'm coming. Um, that's not what these guys are. They're going to disguise it. They're going to drop back in coverage here and there. They'll pick up back out of the backfield. Um, you can do a lot of different stuff with them. Uh, he is a little bit raw. Um so he he's projected to go second to early third round. Uh, I think if he falls to us at three, I think that would be a good, really, really good value pick for us. Uh, but he only really played one season. Uh, because of COVID, Pac-12 was one of the last conferences to jump in to play this year. Mm -hmm. uh, he decided to sit out because he knew because of his good sophomore year that he was going to get drafted um, in this year's draft. He didn't want to risk injury um, or risk COVID, whatever it may have been in his situation. Uh, but he didn't play this year. So... Um, not a whole lot of tape on him. He's definitely a little bit more of a risk. That's why he's probably going later in the draft. Uh, Hamilcar also is a second, third round guy. I think we would probably, uh, I think he'll probably, the trigger will probably be pulled on him in a second round if we're going to get him. Um, just being that we're in the middle, middle of the pack in that third round. Uh, but those are two guys that I'm excited. It's exciting to think of the change of our defense and what the personnel is going to look like, but um, those are the two of the guys that that I would kind of be excited about if they they fell to us in the right spot. Saturday, I know what I'm doing. Hell I'm yeah, doing, I know what I'm doing Saturday. <laughs> Watching me a senior bowl. Thank you, coach. Thanks for 
breaking down some of those potential players. I know that uh, with getting Staley, that talk of a new uh, defense has been uh, a big topic of conversation. You know, we're, we're all hoping that we get a lineman in the first round just to help Herbert uh, because we know that that's where we need the most help. But knowing that we're changing the scheme, we're definitely going to have to invest in some linebacker talent, um, whether it's through free agency or through the draft. So uh, good names to look out for. And now, folks, it's very special time. It is a fan focus, but I don't even want to call it a fan focus. This is more like of we're a, the fans of this. We focus. are the fans of yeah, this focus. We're the fans of this focus. Yeah. The tables have been turned, my friends. So, all right. Huggin' Duggin, who do we got this week? I'm going to, I had a special, I had a double situation on my hands. I'm oh lucky enough to have Coach Kyle was with me hey. for this interview. So, Kyle, I'm going to let you, why don't you take the honors and introduce this guy? Ooh. Yeah. So, we had, this is, this was awesome. This is so much fun. This is a guy that um, played for the Chargers last year. Um, you guys heard me talk about him a lot. Um, I was, I had the pleasure of coaching him in high school, one of the best athletes I've ever coached. Uh, and best people, just an absolute leader. Um, uh, yeah, I, I can't say enough about this guy. Um, unfortunately, he no longer is on the Chargers. He's now playing for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he gets into that a little bit um, in the interview and his excitement about that hire of Urban Meyer. Um, but we got to sit down and have a little interview with Quentin Meeks. Um, Quentin Meeks? Yeah, so, yeah, it's a good one. Ah. I'm excited for you guys to hear it. All right, guys, we are here with a incredibly special guest. Uh, it is somebody that you all probably know pretty well. Um, it is a uh, former charger. Now Jacksonville Jaguar, Quentin Meeks. Thank you so much for coming on Quentin. Oh, thanks, Kevin. I appreciate you for having me. Thanks. Absolutely, man. So, all right, well, let's just get into it. Cause you have a connection with our coach on our podcast. So Kyle, what, what you got, what you got for uh, Quentin? Yeah. So you guys know that I brag about Quentin all the time. I, there's probably five or six times where I was questioning the chargers for not having already pulled them up earlier, yes. um, <laughs> which I'm, Quentin would never say this, but I think that's why coach Lynn was let go. They didn't let, they didn't let Quentin play enough. Um, but yeah, so I coached Q in high school down in San Diego at Del Norte. Um, his dad was a coach for the chargers. His dad is Ron Meeks. Um, Super Bowl champion defensive coordinator with the Colts. And he was the DB coach um, with the Chargers. Um, and that's why Quentin had actually moved to San Diego uh, and just so happened to come out for the school that I was coaching at. And my dad, his favorite story of all time is the first day Q showed up, it was summer and it was seven on seven. So no pads, it's just passing. Um, and it's like the varsity kids. And Quentin was a sophomore and he's like, I'm good, I'm ready. He's like, Quentin, you don't know any of the defense. He's like, that's cool. Just let me go. Quentin just goes up and presses the senior like varsity kid, runs him off the field onto the sideline. And my dad then from then on out had to argue with our varsity head coach as to why Quentin needed to stay on JV the rest of the year. Because we were coaching JV at the time. I was like, no, sorry, coach. Quentin, he's... He needs to stay on JV. He needs to get comfortable <laughs> with the system. We need him. Oh, um, damn, new kid on the block. You know? Yeah. So that's my one. Of, that's Dave's favorite story. My favorite story is um, we. So Quinn actually hurt himself sophomore year. Uh, for us, he missed the last four or five weeks. Um, but he was a, he was a new kid at school. He didn't like he had make make all new friends on the team and stuff. Um, and like the type of leader that Quentin was right off the bat. So Kevin makes Kevin makes all of our um, highlight films, um, and one of the games we beat Tory Pines, and we were a pretty big underdog against them. Uh, we went and beat them, and there was this one play. I don't remember who it was. Somebody took off on a big run, and you see Quentin on the sideline with his boot, like his walking boot, jumping up and down on the <laughs> sideline. Uh, it was it was like I was like, dang, that's a vertical with a boot on. That's intense. <laughs> Um, Combine's gonna be good. Yeah, no, it's just, oh, it, Quentin was by far my favorite. I, I'm sorry if any of the other Don Day kids listening, but my favorite kid to coach. Obviously, most athletic, but also he probably he probably knew more about football than I did because of his dad, and he was always outrageously respectful. Lit, yes, coach. He would just nod to you and be like. They go back to something. Nah, Kyle doesn't know. Yeah, so, yeah his, dad ended, his dad ended up coaching with me. Um, I was the defensive coordinator on the varsity Quentin Jr. And his dad, who was this freaking renowned NFL football coach, was my defensive back coach. And so I know there was times where I would be breaking down the team, talking, and him and Quentin and Ron, I know, were looking at each other like, this kid, what is he doing? <laughs> no, no, no. 
Nah, I <laughs> so what was your experience like, you know, working with Kyle and then, you know, Del Norte and kind of high school football? Is that where you kind of really fell in love with it or was it before then? Uh, well, I'd say it was probably before then, um, just because I've been around football uh, my whole life uh, with my dad being the coach and everything. Uh, I've been going to games since before my first birthday. Um, so, like, my love for football kind of really started early on. Um, but once I came out to Del Norte, and everything, being able to play for Coach Duggan, um, play for Coach Kyle, like, it was just, like, great to have. It was a new experience for me because moving out from Atlanta to San Diego, a uh, little different culture out here on the West Coast and everything. Um, but it was a good adjustment. Um, you know, I'm glad that I was able to uh, play on the JV uh, my sophomore, even though I didn't want to play on varsity at first. Um, you can blame coach my, Dave because you, you were more than good enough. <laughs> <laughs> he was working behind the scene deals to keep you on our team. No, but it's, it's all good. Like, it's <laughs> all good. Um, cause I appreciate, you know, the bonds and the guys that I play with and being able to play for coach Duggan. Um, that was a great experience for me. Um, you know, coach Duggan's one of my favorite coaches, uh, still to this day. And he just always kept it real with all of us. Um, he was hard on us, but he loved us at the same time and he's always encouraging us and, but he expected a lot of us. And that's the common thing that I've always found with all great coaches is like, they have very high expectations for their players and they're hard on them, but they also know when to encourage them and when to love on them and Mm. be that support for them. And coach Duggan did that very well. Um, and you as well, coach Kyle, like, um, you did a great job with us too. Uh, being a young coach and everything, uh, but you you're cool with us and everything. Yeah. And we we all respected you. You demanded our respect, and like we wanted to like give you that respect. You know, like we know that you were like busting your ass for us and everything like that. And like we didn't want to let you down. So like when we was on defense, like we was trying to like hold it down for you and everything. We got after there. it, man. That JV team was that was a good team we had too. Yeah, I know. We, we got after the first it. one, and then yep. after that one nine straight. Like, yep. League, nice. That was the first league, league championship. Yeah, league Hunter. championship, man, yeah. everything. So, like, I was, that was, I was glad it was a special team that, that yep. team yep. was. So, I will, I will say that you probably just made Coach Dave's entire year by saying that. So he's just, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he's listening to <laughs> smiling right now. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, no, no doubt. Well, so tell us a little bit about, you know, you know, because you went to Stanford um, and then you, you from there you you went to the NFL. So tell us a little bit about just kind of we always get like that's the normal question everyone asks, like, what is it like going from the college to the NFL? And, you know, we're, we're talking about all the time with like Justin Herbert and like college to the NFL. Like what was mm-hmm. college to the NFL like for you? And like really like really what was it? How was it really difficult? Was it easy? What was it like for you? Man, uh, college to the NFL for me was pretty tough. Um the path that I had to take, uh, leaving early in my junior year, uh, felt like I was ready to play. Uh, felt like I was ready to play at the NFL level. Um, and then going and drafted was kind of, uh, well, not kind of, it was like, a, it was a huge disappointment for me because you never expect to leave early and not finish your degree and then go and draft it. Um, so then you start second guessing yourself, like, man, what if I would have stayed? Like, but then you can't because you got to keep going forward. And then when you go on drafting in the NFL, like, they're really not expecting you to make the team. Like, you're really just a kind of camp body. Like, you're just like someone there just to give the guys a break during OTAs and training camp uh, starters and stuff. So that you know, and they they'll give you some chances, you know, but you're coming into the NFL is so different than college because everything's much faster and guys are more on point on their stuff. So like, there's not a lot of sloppy technique out there. You need those reps to get better. I don't care how good you are and how talented you are. Like you need those reps to get good against NFL guys. And when you're an undrafted guy, those reps are very limited. And so like you really don't have much room to like mess up. And it's like, you feel like every mess up you have is just another notch against you. Like, ah, oh, man, nah, that's another reason not to keep me. Another reason not to keep me. It's uh, It's been a stressful road for me so far. Um, and then I feel transition from college to, to pro um, just really because of the opportunity from an opportunity standpoint. You know, I've gotten better. I don't regret my decision leaving early uh, simply because like I still feel like I was ready. You know, I played my rookie year. 
Um, I even played on defense a little bit more key as well. And, you know, I played well. Every, every game I played in the NFL, I played pretty well. I've had good plays and bad plays. And, you know, being a young player, I'm still, like, developing. And cause these, these guys, are, these are pros. This is what they do for, like, the whole lives. As far as the competition goes and everything, like, you know that everybody's competition is is raised up a notch because everybody's good. It goes down to, like, the little things, like your technique, um, your film study, like, your eating habits, your sleeping habits, how you train in the off season, how you train during the season. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that, you know, once the off season, they kind of chill. And when season comes back, they try to come back. And that's when a lot, a lot of guys decline in the off season. And you, you'll go, man, how did this guy, like, he was so good, like, these past few years. And then all of a sudden, one year, he just drops off. Well, probably because that guy was just chilling in the off season mm-hmm. the whole time. And then, like, expect to just be great when he came back and your skills diminish if you don't work on them. Um, so I would think that'd be the biggest transition is like learning how to be a pro and like taking care of everything. It takes time. Um, from some people have more opportunities than others. So if you don't kind of get it in time, then, you know, it could be too late. So I'm glad I'm still around so far. And, um, I'm just trying to make this thing last as long as possible. Yeah. Um, Cause like it's pretty tough. <laughs> Can't even imagine. So rise of right now, you are under contract with the Jaguars. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yes. Dude, we were, we had fingers crossed for urban Meyer. That's who we're, we're pumped yeah. about Brandon Staley. Uh, we're excited about him as a coach, but I really, uh, man, I don't know something about urban Meyer. I was pumped about like, what's kind of the feeling in, I don't, I don't know if you've had much interaction with teammates and stuff, but has everyone seemed pretty excited? Um, so I haven't really talked to any of my uh, Jacksonville teammates about it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, to how can you not be excited? Right. This is a national championship winning coach. Um, and he comes from college as well. So, you, you know, he's going to bring some of that college, like environment atmosphere to the locker room, which I'm going to appreciate because like that's something that you miss in the NFL because that connection you have in college with your college teammates is not nearly the same as in the NFL because those guys, they got families now. They're doing their own things. You all live apart. And then the off season, you go to different places. So, like, it's not nearly as, like, tight-knit. And a lot of guys are, you know, they don't try to build those bonds because they know, like, well, you could be gone tomorrow. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's so much changeover. Um, so having a coach that can kind of bring that college atmosphere, that's kind of what the guys – Oh, I heard guys like that come from Seattle. They talk about Pete Carroll and how like he brings that college atmosphere where guys like love being there. It's a fun environment to be around. So that's mostly what I'm excited about, and hopefully, bring a championship there. Yeah, for, well, I I don't hope so. I hope, I hope you get a lot of playing time and <laughs> all pro pro bowler, but no I'm never hoping the Jaguars win anything. Um, uh, bring yeah. So obviously, you were with the Chargers. That's a team that that we support. Um, I had a question. So feel free if you can't answer this. I understand. We, the amount of injuries that the Chargers seem to have on a year by year basis blows my mind. It's unreal. like the only thing that, as a, a fan, like a, like a stand, like a bystander, is like our, our strength and conditioning program has to be just like non existent <laughs> or something. Like there has to be something so drastically different as to why we are kept constantly injured. Like, is there any difference of what you've seen between teams as far as that goes? Like, is there big, is it pretty much there's like a standard for the industry or is it pretty different from team to team? So from the two teams that I've been on, um, there's similarities, but every team has their different like philosophies and what they go by. It's kind of crazy. Like both the teams I've been on, they like every year seems like we deal with so many injuries, like my rookie year. Like, I ended up starting the game on defense because we had so many injuries at corner. And, like, I started that season on the practice squad. When I came to the Chargers last year in the middle of the season, like, they had a lot of injuries then. Um, and then kind of same thing this year. And then once I got let go of the Chargers and then the Jaguars picked me up, like, I came there and it seemed like they had even more injuries. <laughs> and like, man, like, like, they had so many injuries that they had to give me a number that a defensive back can't wear. Like I have a single digit number and like in NFL, you can only wear 20 through 49, but like they had to give me that number because like all the other numbers were taken. So it's just like, I don't know. It's just like 
you know, injury bug, it kind of, you kind of can't predict it. Like it's yeah. such a, I, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Like, it's just, it's, it's a hundred percent injury rate game. Like, does it, does it get into like players heads though? People start going down. Like our, our teammates, like, Oh man, what's going on here? Like everyone's dropping like flies like or snake bit. Yeah, or it definitely, um, it definitely kind of like the mood around the building kind of changes a little bit. Cause yeah. like, especially when it's like key players that go down, um, like, when uh, we were in LA the first week, uh, Drew Tranquil got hurt, hurt, and he's like a very good linebacker for them. So like that kind of like brought guys down a little bit. Like you know it's part of the game, but you don't want to see your boys go down. And then like you know it kind of just messes up the chemistry of the team. So, um, but you just got to kind of focus on keeping your body intact, um, and you you got to take care of your body. You got him, yeah really learn how to do that. And that's part of being a pro that you got to learn. Like you got to get in those ice tubs all the time. Like you got to massage, you got to roll out, you got to do all the therapy stuff. And as soon as you slip up, like, I mean, you can still be doing all that and get hurt, but if you aren't doing that, like you're almost guaranteed to get hurt. So like you got to be on top of it. Got it. Well, and I had a question just in terms of, you know, you've been with two organizations now and we're, you know, we just literally everyone is gone. Like basically we have a whole new coaching staff, a whole new everything. Um, what are some of the differences you've seen between your two, the two teams you played for? And, you know, we, we always get like the, you know, players can't say anything or it's just hard to express what they're feeling about what's going on within the organization. But it seemed like there was some, there was some weird rifts going on this year. And like coach was, was saying weird thing about players and, you know, it was just some weird vibes going on. And like, what was your kind of, you know, experience with that? And what did you, what did you, you know, what did you take out of it? What I would take from that kind of the stuff that was going on. So I've been on three losing teams, uh, well, three seasons of losing, like, my rookie year last year and this year like all the team two things I've been on we've all been losing teams and whenever you're on a losing team there starts to get a lot of pressure because in NFL they know like if you're not winning like jobs are on the line so coaches start feeling the pressure they start feeling the heat and then they start putting me on the players players start feeling the heat if they're not performing well or whatever they feel like they're going to lose their job. So then they start, you know, putting the heat on other players, or the coaches back at them. So, like, there's always a rift, and it always starts, like, once the losing starts swirling. Like, beginning of the season, you know, even if you're losing a little bit, like, everybody kind of stays calm because it's like, okay, like, it's the beginning of the season, we're just kind of working through it, whatever. Like, my first year in Jacksonville, we started 3-1. and one. And like everything was good. Like nobody was, <laughs> everybody was happy. You know, we had things to complain about, but like, you know, guys were, you know, pretty cool for the most part. Then we started losing, I don't know how many games we lost in a row. And then that's when everything started going down. Coaches started trying to change things around. Players didn't like it. Players going to coach, coach going to players. Like, and that's how it starts. Players going back at players. Whenever there's losing going on, there's just pressure and that pressure just causes a lot of tension. And so like, I would probably say, I mean, I don't know this for sure, but I can only go off of my experiences. Like every losing team has like bad chemistry between like the coaches and players. Cause like guys are just fearing for their jobs. Like mm. coaches are fearing for their jobs. Players are fearing for their jobs. And so like, whenever that happens, like there's just, it's like a Comes domino like, effect. They start knocking each other down. It's like, you just keep going. Yeah. 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 Like when I got to, when I got to uh, Jacksonville, like the energy was kind of dead. Cause like, you know, they're losing so many games in a row. Like the life gets sucked out of you and kind of like, yeah. you're not having fun. Like you got to go work every day and you're still getting lost. Like the fans are talking about you. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. get booed at your games. Like, right. you know, we did, they didn't have fans at the LA games, but they have fans at the Jacksonville games. And like, yeah. Losing, they go, <laughs> they go let you know. Like it's, it's crazy to think too, like fans, there's a lot of charger fans upset that we won the last four games of the year. Cause they wanted a higher draft. Pick. draft picks, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> But it, it like it's good. It's like an insightful to hear that it no players they're competitors. They're still like they want to win. Like yeah. one, they want they want to keep their jobs. Coaches want to keep their jobs, and it does cultivate that team 
um, that we obviously, as being athletes and coaches and things, you know that you win, that bond is is greater. Things can oh, be going definitely. on outside, but if you're winning games, everything seems easier. Practice is more fun. Oh, Off no season doubt. is much better. Everything's better. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And like, you just you just feel better because you feel like what you're working for, like you're being rewarded for it. It's yeah. like, okay, we're putting in all these hours, practicing all this. Here's the benefit from it. We're winning games. Like, we're getting towards our goals. So, like, everybody's more chill. But, like, when that's not happening, people want to start pointing the fingers. As soon as the finger points start, it's, it was bad, like, my rookie year. Like, you know, was because that was a team that had just came off of being in the AFC Championship. And so this is a team that had Super Bowl hopes. And then once we started losing so many games, like, I mean, the tension was rose pretty high. Like, kind of the same thing. It's just been kind of the same thing every year, you know, because um, I haven't experienced the winning seasons yet. Like, I think most games I won a season is five or six. So, <laughs> yeah, it sucks. So, you know, hopefully, um, I don't know how it is on winning teams, um, but I'm sure they don't go through the same stuff. But not. And I had a question too, to kind of go off on that is the, you know, the thing that happened to the chargers this year was this, this, the special teams, man, like that was, everyone was talking about that every week and like they, they fired people and it was just this roller coaster, like without being specific, like what was going on, like with the, the energy with that, like we were just all so confused as fans. Honestly, as far as that goes, I'm not really sure like what was happening. Um, we have we had a great coach, uh, Coach George Stewart um, is a great special teams coach. Um, so, me personally, I don't think he was the problem. I don't think he should have got fired. Um, I think they just kind of wanted to have someone to blame. And I don't know who made that decision. It's not my job to <laughs> think about or make those decisions. But he was a great coach. So um, sometimes things just don't work out on the field. Like. Uh, is it another one of those things where it's like a domino effect where once it starts, it's just like, a, you know, it just feels like it's going to yeah. keep going. It's like, it's like, it's just like, you know, momentum. Like, I mean, I'm a big believer in momentum. Like when it's going good for you, you know, things just seem to go well. But when like things are going bad, like it kind of seemed like that the whole year kind of with this, like not just on special teams, but like, you know, all those comeback wins that were happening and things like, you know, it's, there's not really like one specific person to blame, not a specific coach, not a specific player. It's just like collectively, like things are just not happening or like they were just making plays and we weren't, or, you know, it would be different things every time. You know, there's not really one thing to kind of point at. Um, but sometimes it just happens. It's frustrating what it does, but like, it's just part of it. Just, man, yeah. That was awesome. Thanks, Quentin. It's fun talking to you again, dude. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm every yeah, week. Yeah. I'm like, Quentin's going to be on the field. Quentin's going to be on the field. Quentin's going to be on the field. I'm, I'm excited for you in Jacksonville. I can't wait for next season. Uh, me too. Um, you know, I, I think that the opportunity, I'm going to get a fair opportunity in Jacksonville. So, like, I'm excited to actually get a fair opportunity. So, all right, man. Well, we're pumped. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, it was so great talking to you and meeting you and hearing all the all the backstories with uh, Kyle and Dave. So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, so, no doubt. Yeah, man. We, we really right. appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Wow. Quentin Meeks, dude. Yeah. It, he's wow. such a cool guy. It's so cool you have such a connection with him, Kyle, and, you know, calling you and, yeah. and, and our pops, his, like, favorite coaches pretty much. It's crazy. Yeah, he's awesome, dude. I'm, I, it's just crazy his story, man. He went to Stanford and um he like out of high school, he wasn't hugely recruited a lot. Uh I knew how good he was, but he just he was like the best player on our whole team. So it was hard for him to stand out because everyone we played was like, Yeah, don't let Quentin touch the ball mm. and don't throw it at whoever Quentin's covering. Mm. So it's like he didn't have these outrageous stats, but then he went to all these he went to like he did seven on seven and went to the camps and so forth and uh, he ended up playing at Stanford and killed it at Stanford. Had a pick six in the Rose Bowl one wow. year. Um, it was just an like outstanding nickel corner out there. Uh, everyone was I, I when he was going into the draft, he left early. Everyone said like fourth, fifth round at the latest, mm. and then he ended up going undrafted. Wow, um, which was Crazy. obviously like he had mentioned it was hard for him, but 
um, yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to watch him in Jacksonville next year. I think he's going to get a fair shot there and um, be able to make some plays. Well, congratulations, Quentin Meeks, to be the first Charger player to be interviewed on Charger <laughs> Chat, a trivia tidbit that will go down in history without a doubt. Be sure to have it in your back pocket when you go to bar trivia night, folks. First Charger interviewed on Charger Chat. That is so awesome. Thank you, Quentin, for uh, hanging out with these Doug and Knuckleheads and uh, chatting a bit of football with them. It's it's very special. Thank you for doing that. Uh, now it's time to look to all of you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you, Craig from Texas. It's time to talk to people <laughs> on Twitter. So let's start it off with our old favorite, Craig from Texas. What do you got, Craig from Texas? Chargers chat family. It's your boy, Craig in Texas. What's going on? Uh, off season is in full effect. The coaching staff seems to be just about filled out with the exception of, I think, possibly a new QBs coach. Um, highly doubt that Pep sticks around, but if he does, I would love it. Um, dude definitely has earned an opportunity somewhere else in an elevated position. So we'll see. Um, Ronaldo Hill coming in as the DC is probably not going to be a lauded pickup because I don't think anybody of any real um, name or notoriety was going to take that DC spot. Staley's already expressed that he's going to be calling the plays. So basically, he's the de facto DC. Anyone else coming in kind of ends up playing maybe that Eric Bieniemy role in KC that he uh, is on offense under Andy Reid. So not super surprised by that. But um, offseason moves coming up is what I'm looking forward to. Interested to see how Staley kind of maneuvers the roster, who sticks around and who goes, who trickles in from the Rams and um, what he does in the draft. I think we might be a little shocked. So with that said, let me put this question on the table to you, gents. What type of players on offense do you think Brandon Staley wants on his team? I think there could be some moves. I think the wide receiver room could be shaken up a little bit. But other than that, interested to know what you guys think, as always. Bo gang it on bang. Caleb, you bye. <laughs> uh, there he gets old man. Craig. I love you, Craig. I love that guy. Love that guy. One day we'll get to meet him in person. One day. One day. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just watching the last uh the last Chief game against the Bills, like just seeing on offense what they do with with Kelsey. Um, I I really see, you know, us or basically what we're trying to do is compete with the Chiefs. So you need two things. I think you need to re-sign Henry, and I think you need to bring in another tight end that can be maybe not at his level, but close. Um, and then the second thing is, I think, speed. I think we need to – you need to have a hill type. I don't know. You're not going to find another hill. In, in we the, have a KJ draft, Hill. <laughs> we have a hill, different hill. It's a different hill. Um, but that, that's those are the kind of the, the guys that I'm thinking you're going to need to target on offense. I think our running back room – is good right now. I don't know if Justin Jackson comes back and it becomes a, a kind of a different three headed monster, but that's my thought at least what, what you guys got. Yeah, I think, so here's what I think about Brandon Staley and what everyone's most excited about is he does the best with what he has. Um, meaning I don't think he's going to go out and make a big reach to bring someone in to fix a whole like position unit. I think he's going to do what's smartest at each position uh, and what he's got, he's going to utilize the best he can. If he has a poor left tackle, he'll make up for it in some other way. If he can't bring in big time guys to fill positions or have that speed guy on offense, then our offense is going to little, look different than the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and that's what I'm excited about to see what he does and um, in ways that us as fans go, hey, man, like, dude, you need to fix this and this. Like, we got to change up the, like, the offensive line has to change, blah, blah, blah. Whatever he ends up doing, I'm excited to see how he's able to navigate all that together to make the best product possible with, we all know, like there's, there's limitations on what you can do. There's a, there's a cap that you can't go over. Um, there's guys that are already in contract under contract before he walked into the building. Um, he's going to be limited in what he can do. Um, so I'm, I, I'm excited to see how he works all that together. Um, I am very though curious as to what he does. Um, most specifically with our offensive line, um, uh, Trey Turner, I, I like, how do you even keep the guy to be honest, like with how much he's owed and the cap that he's, he's taken up. 
Uh, I that's what I'm 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 most excited about being an an offensive minded head coach. What he's what he like pushes at Tom Telesco to make our roster as 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 uh, as efficient as possible. Agreed. I think the goal is going to be to get somebody on the offensive line. I don't know that wide receiver needs to be shaken up. I think Herbert proved it last year that or this last season that he can make anybody look good. Um, it doesn't matter the target. If you've got somebody that uh, is better or special, absolutely. He's going to just, you know, utilize that. But I don't think wide receiver honestly needs to get shaken up very much. If we pick somebody up in a later round, so be it. But I don't think it's 100% necessary. Get somebody to protect Herbert. And if it happens to be something in the form of another tight end, that's fine. I, I think that's what the focus would and should B for this offensive side. Yeah, linemen for sure. I think I think that Hunter Henry is good enough. As long as we have a decent offensive line, Hunter can go run more routes. Right. He was basically a glorified pass blocker last year. He didn't like he had a career year still still catching the right. ball, but he had to stay in and help block a lot of plays. Mm-hmm. You know, like he wasn't out there running route. Travis Kelsey, what does he block like twice a game? Maybe he's just constantly out and route. Make the front five stronger, and then maybe he'll get a little more opportunity. I think it will. That's a good yeah. Point. 100%. Excellent. Thank you, Craig. Always great to hear from you. And now we look to ask Twitter. And we started off this one with Daniel Lawallen, aka Shaibariba, who asks the question Hello, good sirs. Who by chance on the defensive side of the ball do you envision taking the biggest leap next year under this new coaching tree? Bloody hell, I'm excited for the potential. Cheerio, chaps. (laughs) (laughs) I got to confess, that was a request. That's Arthur right from Peaky Blinders (laughs) because I just binged the shit out of that show. Oh, my God. If you need something to watch, (laughs) watch Peaky Blinders on Netflix. That shit is good. Peaky Blinders. What do you think there, Kyle? Yeah, I think um, with talking already about Staley's kind of bringing the best out of people, the new defense being very much one where if you can do multiple things, um, you're going to benefit. I think Kaiser White, honestly, is going to be one of the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Obviously, everyone's going to. Um, De- like uh, Joey Bosa is going to blow up. Like Those guys are going to do it, but one, some of like the under-the-radar kind of names, um, Kaiser White's in a contract year. This is his fourth year with the squad, so he's got to go out and he's got a ball to be able to get uh, get paid next year. Um, I think with his ability, he was a safety in college. He's proven that he can do it at the linebacker spot, uh, but I think his versatility and what he's going to be able to provide to the uh, to the defense, um, I think he's going to blow up this year. I think it's going to be a good year for Kaiser. Excellent. I, I can't disagree with that. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we've got Brian Gago. Who asked the question? <laughs> How will our defense players fit Brandon <laughs> Staley's Eagle Front defense scheme in which lesser known players will have the biggest benefit? Oh, Arnold. Um, I think all our linebackers probably are going to just shine now. I think Kenneth Murray's really going to have a chance to be. I mean, we talked about it last episode the guy that just flies in out of nowhere and just pin his ears back. Yeah, yeah. just. Take the top off, as uh, as we like to say around here. I, I mean, I don't know. Is there anybody else that stands out to you? I think there's, you know, this is a big dif- This is a big difference in defensive schemes and the players we have on the roster. And we talked about it last week. Is there's a lot of the big heavy guys in the front that we're not necessarily going to need around this year. So I think, like you know, Kyle was saying previously, like linebackers and these kind of these safety hybrid guys, like uh, Drew Tranquil and some of these guys that are quick and. You know, I just seeing some of these guys come off the ball and Derwin, I think, is going to be just insane in this defense. So I think that's that's where I think the people that are kind of going to excel this this upcoming year. Excellent. Thank you, Brian. Next, we've got Adam Spellhog, who asked the question, who will uh, who will be backup QB next season? Hmm. Let me look at the roster. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's Easton Stick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Adam. That's Ad- Adam, from, Adam from the Dakotas, <laughs> and I think that's the question. That's what he wanted he, to hear. That's what we got for you. He gets uh, – I don't – there's nothing – Oh, yeah. yeah. That he makes gets, sense uh, right now. He gets Dakota. It'll be interesting, though, who we bring in as the number three. 
Um, cause normally yeah. you, you have at least three, one, a guy is a practice squatter or he's on the roster, but not active on game day. That's what we had all of this last year, the last couple of years. So, um, it will be, you'll bring somebody in. I don't know who that might be or what that'll look is like. Is the consensus that we just won't have Tyrod Taylor? Yeah, he's gone. Okay. He's, he's a, a free agent. He's not in a contract. He's gone, he stay, so no reason. Yeah. He's too expensive. He'll be gone for okay. sure. Um, so Easton stick will be the number two. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see who they else they bring in as uh, to to compete with um, Easton for that that backup spot. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. That's a great question. I hadn't even thought about it. Yeah, that's what Staley said. Is it's all you know? It was competition. It's having a, a, a goal every day, and you know there's going to be competition everywhere. Clearly, QB one is safe, sound, comfortable. Put <laughs> it to bed. Uh, two and three. Yeah, we'll see. We will see. Thank you, Adam. Uh, next, we've got Brian LaRoe, who asked the question, think we get to see teams have a training camp slash offseason? If we repeat last year with no offseason, how big an impact is that for this new staff? Well, I'll jump on this one. I think what I said earlier, like, it's so important for them to get in the facility and be face-to-face and hopefully not, you know, be literally – you take for granted being able to literally see somebody's mouth when they're talking to you, like through a mask, like it, it's, it's kind of an awkward thing. The more you do it, the more you're around people just having conversations where you can only see their eyes. Like you're just not kind of connecting in my opinion. So just on the very simple base level of that, I've got, I hope everyone gets, everything goes okay this year. Yeah. I think that that's one of his biggest um, like ideas behind the chargers. Like one of our, Coaching philosophies, relationships. It's hard to do that on Zoom, man. So it's going to be very tough, 100%. It's, it was hard enough last year with the consistent staff. It, it'll be hard. Hopefully, everything is taken care of when we're back in action. Fingers crossed. Hope so. Thank you, Brian. Uh, next, we have Anchovies21, a.k.a. Anthony Renteri2, who asked the question, How hyped are you guys seeing this staff being out together? Also, does Coach have any information about Lombardi hiring? Don't know much about him. He love you, bye. You sassy pirate. I'm hyped. <laughs> I'm fucking psyched. <laughs> I'm <pirate>. pumped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, he just slammed the desk so hard his like camera shook. That was amazing. The Kyle, yeah, what you got, uh, we went over the Lombardi hire a little bit earlier. I, I think we're all excited. It's just different, like. All these guys are kind of unknown. Um, some people are being salty about Lombardi with his stint with the, the Lions, but I think we're all excited about the potential of what could happen. It's all the young guys that with a lot of energy and excitement, and hope. I'm obviously we're all hoping it just just works out. Please, do you guys? Do you guys hear that? Ooh, oh. Oh, he's back. He goes. He's back. <laughs> Oh, Vince. Oh, I think oh, I'm Vince. excited. Get out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen anything. He hasn't spoken yet, so I'm going to hold my reservations for a minute, but he's Lombardi, so he's already got a, a check mark in my book. Awesome. Thank you, anchovies. <laughs> Every anchovy out there, all 21 of you. Appreciate it. Next, we've got <laughs> Bolt King, a.k.a. Bolt King SoCal, who asked the question, Why did Staley hire the retread? No results? Wash out OC Lombardi? Find out this summer. I I don't know. Like like we said, like I wouldn't consider him a washout. Like he's been in the league for a long time. He's been with one team for a very long time. He's clearly an asset. So I I, I th- some of these reactions that I've seen, and no offense to you, Bolt King, um, dope name. Um, they just seem a little extreme. Like I think a lot of people they in their minds they were locked into Dayball. In their minds, they were locked into Steichen or, or promoting Pep Hamilton. So, like, you're feel- a lot of people's feelings are hurt right now. But I don't see why you know Lombardi's uh, a washout. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say that. Yeah, he's getting an opportunity to prove himself with this team, and I think uh, I'm excited. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be fun. Thank you, Bolt King. I'll hail the Bolt King. I'll hail. All right. Next, we've got Bobby Calderon, aka B Calderon Three. Who asked the question? What are your favorite film memories? What do you think his legacy will be when we look back in 20 years? Obviously, hopefully, 
By then he'll have a gold jacket and we could get his number retired. Yeah, it's something we haven't talked about this too much. I kind of was just avoiding it because it kind of makes me super sad. Um, but yeah, the fact that he's retiring, it's just such a bummer. And I, I kind of got a feeling a lot like he was missing us in a way. Like, you know, it, he did a year with another team and it didn't feel the same kind of vibe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm speaking for him. I don't know that for <laughs> sure, but I got that vibe from some of his pressers. Um, I'll just knock it off. Favorite film memory. There's so many, but the one, most recent one that comes to mind, I mentioned it before, is his, uh, his like 10 yard run for a first down. He gets up, he looks around, and then he does the really late first down signal and made the whole bench explode. I remember jumping out of my seat, just super excited. <laughs> um, I love that guy. I think he, he will be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and people, and there's so many Phil haters that you're just going to get a lot of people talking shit on him now because now it's just the, this is all you do now is you talk about the player. You, there's nothing else to prove. There's nothing else on the field. It's all said and done. So I think he's one of the toughest quarterbacks that has ever played in the National Football League. 100%. Um, so if there's a toughness hall in Canton, um, he would be the first player you'd probably walk into that room and see, in my opinion. Yeah, I think there's so many great memories of Phil. Um, one of my favorites was actually a recent one too. It was when he played the Jaguars through that little screen to Austin Eckler, ran for 80 yards. Mm. He got like knocked down and he got up talking smack to the pass rusher. He's like, just don't do it in my ears. Like I will, I will do, do it in your ear. <laughs> uh, 80 yard touchdown. You know, yeah. like he's just such Woo! a fire he's walking ball. away yeah, he's screaming. <laughs> so high. And like talking smack to the rev. Yeah. The, yeah. the rev was like, don't do that. He's like, I will do yeah. that. You know, yeah. and. Yeah, he's just he's just so fired up, dude. He's just he's the ultimate charger. Like I don't know anyone that's done so much for the organization. Uh, he's the he was the he was he was the Chargers for a really really long mm -hmm. time. Um, and yeah, absolutely Hall of Famer. Um, ho I'm hoping it's a first ballot guy, but you, you never know. Um, but yeah, I it's it was a sad day to see Phil officially um, retire. To yeah, time. I know. I'm excited to watch what he does as a coach. Hopefully. I'm praying that he he said he's going to coach when he retires, but man, having him on like the Monday Night Football squad oh for a couple of years. Oh my God, I would oh love that God. so much. That would be so ESPN good. ESPN did reach out to him. Uh, he's already mentioned his plan, so I doubt that he bites on the first uh, offer. But yeah, he's absolutely got a spot on uh, as an but analyst. Imagine him covering a Chargers. Oh game. God, I'd love it so much. I'd, I'd literally, I'd watch every Monday Night Football game. I usually do anyways, but yeah. I would like, yeah, I just be, I just would love that so much. Yeah. just to Let's keep him that. in my football life, please. I love, yeah, I love hearing Tony Romo uh, call games. I think Philip Rivers would like take it up like times ten. Uh, from Tony oh yeah, because he has hilarious. all the knowledge. Yeah. Plus, he's funny. Yeah, oh, he's hilarious, and he's Tony safe Romo, from broadcast. He's, totally TV. he's not going to cuss. Yeah, he, he'll, be he'll never curse. He'll never curse. No. Yeah. Um, for me, Philip Rivers. I, I, there's tons of great memories, but I think the thing that I will always kind of look back to is every face that he makes. I think if you just typed Philip Rivers face in Google image search, you would get a slew of just amazing facial expressions that this guy would make, including like. <laughs> my favorite is like when it, and I I mean I'm not trying to kick him when he's down but when he when we were like struggling and he would have his hands up in his up in his jersey and then he'd have like that bottom lip like poking out of his <laughs> or the or where he's looking at Jerry Jones he's like <laughs> Jerry's on yeah. the sideline he's like he's just got that excited such a goofball, ah, such a love, goofball. love you Phil um love you Phil. yeah Love you, Phil. So thank you, Bobby. I uh, appreciate it. Next, we've got Salty Sports Guy, a.k.a. the Salty Sports Dude. He asked the question, Dude, what under-the-radar player on defense do you expect to have a breakout season under Staley? Kaiser White. Next question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It's a good question, but I think we hit it already. Um there's so many guys like this whole defense. We do, but we honestly don't know. There's so many guys that could, yeah. Linval Joseph, maybe he has the best season of his entire career. Like I could I be. Can see any of it happening. I'd be all right with that. Jerry Tillery all of a sudden starts playing like a first round draft pick. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? That would be cool. Like, maybe. Yeah. I, I think they're all going to do better. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's better across the board. Thank you, Salty Sports Guy. Next, Phil H O F. Better be. AKA I am Gunner asked the question, what moves does Telesco need to make this off season in order to be a legit long-term threat to KC? I.e. 
defending against their strengths, exploiting their weaknesses. <laughs> what do you call that one? That's, a, that's the nervous teen. <laughs> His voice is finally cracking. <laughs> the nervous teen. Uh, I, I, we, we talked about it a little bit. We're like That's what everyone says now is like you're competing with Kansas City. How do you compete with Kansas City? Well, first of all, we've competed pretty well in uh, – that first Herbert game. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. Mm -hmm. We just need a better, better offensive line. You could add more weapons to give him, but we're not going to be able to do much more than we already did. If, unless the offensive line is better. Um, I think that's just, the yeah, I line. think, I, do, I think we're close. I don't think there's huge moves that need to be made. Um, we're not far off. We need to stay healthy. We need to be like effective football uh, and not blow it. You can't have turnovers. You can't have penalties. Anytime you play any great team, it's not just the Kansas City Chiefs. Right. It's the Buffalo Bills. It's it's all these teams that are good. You have to play your best football. You can't make mistakes. Uh, and I don't think we're far off. I think good leadership that's going to be excited and get guys motivated, uh, winning early in the season. Um, and yeah, I think I think with a young quarterback that's getting more experience, uh, we're going to score. We got to score thirty points a game, uh, and I think we have the potential to do that right now. How do we get some of that good luck stuff like that? Tom Brady, I can throw three interceptions and still win a. A, a NFC championship game. Like, how do we get that kind of luck? You got to believe. They yeah. got to believe in themselves and each other uh, in the organization. And then that kind of crap just happens. You got this, Staley. We're counting on you. Counting on you, big guy. Thank you, Phil Hall of Fame. 100%. Appreciate it. Next, we've got Chimney Crickets. I love this guy. I got Boots who asked the question. Short one today. Does Rivers make it to the Hall of Fame or what? <laughs> hey. <laughs> That was a good, a good one. one. I like that. My answer That's is it. C. 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 That's a unanimous yeah. yes. He 100% yes. deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I don't care who you are. He needs to be there. Thank yeah. you, Chimney Cricket. I wonder what <laughs> I wonder what face they'll pick for his bus. I hope it's, I hope it's something the gooviest one they could possibly find. I hope. <laughs> yeah, I want a goof. And a bolo tie. Oh, yes. Definitely get a bolo Gotta tie. Gotta be in a bolo tie. Gotta have a ball though. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Chimney Crickets. Uh, next, we've got Ross Morrow, a.k.a. Ross Morrow 10, who asked the question. He asked for a depressed Dable voice, so here you go. What off-season moves would you like to see in free agency and the draft to improve the crappy old line Out of Cosme, Tucker, Derisha, and Slater, which one do you like the most? That's your depressed table right there. <laughs> He's so <laughs> very sad. So <laughs> sad. Um, I think it's, I'm not going to be, honestly, watching the draft, I'm not going to be upset as long as they say offensive tackle. Like, it's not a guarantee <laughs> yeah. that they'll be the good. The first word better be offensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As, as long Off as we get an yeah. offensive tackle, I'll be hyped. Um. The guy that I think will just plug and play the easiest because the biggest need that we have is left tackle is Samuel Cosme. Um, the guy's done it for two years at Texas. He was a captain on the team. Um, he's got plenty of experience under his belt. He's not a one one hit wonder kind of guy. Uh, I think he could come in and play right away. He's kind of projected as the offensive tackle two behind Sewell. Um, so that's that's if he can fall to us at thirteen, I think Samuel Cosme is an awesome pickup for us. I could get on board with I'm that. I'm all for like, it. Big. Big tackles that aren't ones we currently have on our roster. I'll take I'll one. be psyched for any of these names. So thank you, Ross. Appreciate <laughs> it. All right. Next, we've got Supervolts34 who asked the question. What's up, guys? If allowed, what game would you guys be attending in Los Angeles or any other city? I, as always, great shows. Keep it up, guys, 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 and bolt up. <laughs> I, I want to do what we did last year. I, I, I'm i not super in, like needing to go to a specific game. I'm going to a home game for mm -hmm. sure. I want to party at Thunder Alley. I want to meet everybody. I want to hang out. I want to have ideally a back-to-back -back week where we can do one game in LA, one game in Vegas, and just make it like the most epic week of our lives, boys. That's what I'm looking 100%. for. 100%. Yeah, that sounds sick. I We don't know the schedule. I've got it here. So home, home opponents is obviously AFC West. The Browns, the Cowboys, the Giants, the Steelers, the Patriots. I'd like to see the Patriots, honestly. I'd like to see get some fucking retribution <laughs> from what happened to us last season. And I'd like to see Staley do it. I, I actually I take it back. That I want to go to that one. <laughs> I want to go. I want to see the Chiefs. I've been to two games at Arrowhead. Um one and one in my attendance. I want to <laughs> see I want to see the game at in LA, 
home field advantage, get a big W. No, oh, we sat all of our starters. <laughs> Whatever. We all, all of our starters were hurt before the season right. started. Yeah, I, I kind of, I'm leaning towards the Chiefs as well, just to just to rub it in everybody's face that <laughs> we did it. I live in the middle of just all Chiefs. I just can't look at the color red anymore. Like, I don't have it <laughs> in my wardrobe. There, it's not in my closet. Like, if I can avoid seeing them, that's fine with me. But I'll go with you guys if that's what you prefer. All right. Thank you, Super Bowl. It's always good to hear from you. Next, we've got Gnarly Ray Jepson, who asked the question, Do you guys have anything that makes you feel like a jinx? Example. I've never seen the Chargers win when I'm at the game. I've seen them lose in San Diego, St. Louis, Kansas City, and Nashville. Never seen them win live. Please, God, make the pain stop. <laughs> Gnarly Can I get an Ray. Amen? <laughs> amen. I think you might be our jinx, Gnarly Ray. You shouldn't go to any live games, man. I hate to bring this up, but Kyle... Who did you name your fantasy football team and they became Ooh. injured twice? Yep, that's a jinx for sure. <laughs> Not doing it anymore. Who, 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 tell them who was be the, the first one. Next year and see what hopefully somebody <laughs> who, who, goes down. What the were the teams? What were the first two teams? Um, I, honestly, I don't remember the it first was, one. I know Drew Tranquil. Right. The tranquilizer, well, the tranquilizer the second one. and he got hurt. The tranquilizer, and then I think it was a Derwin James, wasn't it? It was some Derwin yeah. James name, Derwinators or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> something yeah, better than that. Got, but so yeah. far, Kyle naming his fantasy football teams has been the biggest son of a bitch jinx that has <laughs> plagued this team. So, Kyle. Also, our bolt predictions. That's so true. Our bolt predictions have been kind of jinxy don't in the past. Shit. <laughs> oh, all right. Minor, no. my, honestly, like, in all honesty, minor, like, I'm trying to <laughs> find what there, they minor. are. Like, I try something <laughs> new. <laughs> every, you guys I, on your own. I actively go out of my way to do something different every week. Like, I have enough jerseys I can wear one each week. So I'm never in a position where I can find out what my jinx is because I'm so fluid and trying to avoid a jinx. Does that make sense? Mm. Whatever. Like, I if we win, saying, yeah. I wear the same jersey the next game. Game, but we usually don't win back to back mm. games, so it's just it's a such such a crapshoot for James me. And I don't not yeah. real. I just, yeah. just we just need Staley to fix it. And fix <laughs> Our it team's quick. just not good in yeah. the past. We, we just a lot. that's what it is. Sorry. What we it just is. need to light Sorry, some sage day. around the stadium. You know, wave it around and call it. You know, scrub the scrub the stadium of all the bad juju. And who knows, gnarly? Maybe you will. This will all flip around. New coach, new start. Go to a game. This the, it'll be the deciding factor, man. It'll you go to a new game with a new coach and a new team, and you, you let us know. Let us know how it goes. Yes. All right. That's it for Ask Twitter. Uh, thank you to everybody that reached out to us on Ask Twitter. You've made this episode probably two and a half hours long. I love you anyways because <laughs> I love talking to you guys. Uh, but somebody that we need to thank uh, especially uh, is a guy that goes by the name of Tank Edits. Uh, who provided us the graphics that you see before you. If you're checking us out on YouTube right now, you see these beautiful mugs before you. That's all thanks to our main man, Tank Edits. Yeah, he it, he stepped up and did all the graphics and all the stuff for us for this. Technically, this is season three. We're starting a new season now. So new graphics, season new three. intro, new all kinds of stuff. Yeah, who, who would have thought? Yeah, you guys have a chance to binge watch season one and two to catch up to season three because you don't know what's going <laughs> on, right? <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know if you should do that. Or Yeah. <laughs> Just don't listen to the don't listen to the episode where I talk about uh, wanting to uh, over her. Just don't listen to the <laughs> Oh, episode. listen to that one it's over one the, and over. It's the most funny. It's the funniest episode it. you guys will listen to. <laughs> it sucks. I, I really want to forget it happened. All right. That's going to do it for us here for this episode of Charger Chat. Thank you for all of you who stuck around and listened all the way to the end. You guys are champs. I, I, I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. K, okay, love you. Bye. K, okay, love you. Bye. K, love you, boy. And now a word from our sponsors. Tell me, sports fans, which would you rather be driving? Deep, 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 deep. Broncos, Broncos, Broncos. Oh. 
trust nothing but the best. Bosa Motors. It's a beast.